Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna to take a look in the new Smart Art Box. This is the April 2020. I think I have the right month. It's been a crazy month. Uh, we're gonna take a peek here. Let's see, what do we have in the box this month? All right, as always, we have our brochure. This time it is down on a matte uh, paper rather than a glossy paper and it has more sheets and oh look there's like some lettering guides in here it must be on a matte paper so you can actually write on there that's really nice actually um let's see the topic of this month is hand lettering my probably least skilled craft ever of all time <laughs> We've got some paint brushes here. These are by Royal and Lay Nickel, great paintbrush company. We got some small round brushes there. We have Spectrum Noir metallic pens. It looks like uh, looks like there's a brush and a bullet tip, twin tip metallic markers. Um, looks like we have some bottles of ink, abstract acrylic ink by Sennelier. I've never used this. I've used their abstract acrylic paint. That's nice. I have used acrylic ink before. Um, since I don't do lettering, this is going to be a really challenging box for me to do something with this. Uh, pretty colors though. We have a white. White ink is always handy. Um, a looks like a baby blue and a like a phthalo green. Uh, we have got a Fabriano. Looks like a bullet journal. It's got the little dot. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's got like those little dots. I'd say about. Um, Oh, three sixteenths of an inch apart there, grid. And we have some Stonehenge Aqua Black paper, which I have used this before, and it's a 100% it's a cotton watercolor paper that's black, which is really nice. So I'll probably end up doing something with this. And I, I think I'll kind of uh, carry on my tradition of making Happy Mail this month, since we can't visit anybody in person, and um, probably do something with that paper to make some greeting cards. So let me get myself organized, and when we get back, we will start a project. Since this month's box was hand lettering, I thought it would be fun to um, maybe do some greetings as a focal point on a card. That way I can do some happy mail and I can kind of put these supplies through their paces. Now, I am not a hand letterer. I don't have a lot of experience. I love calligraphy and looking at other people's hand lettering, but I've never had a knack for it. And anytime I've gotten a calligraphy book, I'm always so overwhelmed with all of the options and all of the steps that I usually give up before I get too far into it. And I have like several books on calligraphy on my shelf that just have been aspirational. Uh, but I really liked the guide here because there are very simple strokes. It goes over um, how to hold, not really how to hold your brush, but how to uh, put pressure on when you're putting down strokes, how to lift up when you're doing up strokes, and how to get that pretty brushed letter look that's so popular right now. It's kind of like a quick start guide. It gets you right into using those pens and um, it doesn't bog you down with too many details because I am not gonna be a serious student of brush lettering or calligraphy, so this is just right for me. So I started off by taking the black watercolor paper that came in the Smart Art Box and I took a sheet of it, which is 8 by 10 and cut it into four pieces. Then I took a piece of post-it tape and I put it straight across the middle or well, yeah, it's about the middle of my card so my sentiment would be above the center when I uh, lettered it. So my first idea was to use the fine tip pen, uh, end of my pen, and neatly write the word hello because I figured if I have that guide then I can do the thick and thin and not have to think about it when I'm using the brush end of the pen. Um, I have to say this did not pan out as well as I'd hoped because when I went in with my brush end um, I found that I didn't have my spacing quite right. Uh, I was just kind of guessing with the thin end. Uh, so I decided that I was going to flip it over and try it again on the back side just doing it freehand and I like the look much better. I think with brush lettering the brush style versus um, you know your traditional calligraphy is that it is forgiving and it is much more um, suitable to a loose, uh, playful, casual lettering. And I really like the way that hello came out, just kind of winging it. I do like having the post-it note um, tape there that I'm using as a guide. You could, you know, use a post-it note for that matter, or a piece of paper tape down, um, because it does help me keep my lettering straight. I tend to write uphill if I don't have any letter, any lines on my paper. So just that little tip there is going to help quite a bit in keeping your lettering somewhat uh, lined up. I'm not very good at spacing. I almost ran out of space 
place with the uh, with the birthday there, but um, it's still, I think it's still fine. It's definitely not perfect, but um, I'm new to this. So, uh, so I was pretty pleased with how that one came out. I decided I would make uh, four different cards and just kind of practice with the different, uh, the different techniques here. So I thought this looked kind of plain. I think that would be fine to send out like that on a card, but I'm like, I really want to decorate it a little bit. And I was looking at the other supplies that came in my smart art box and it came with this acrylic ink. So I thought hmm, maybe I could stamp with that ink because I have tons and tons of stamps. I'm sure a lot of you do too. And so I thought, well, can I make a stamp pad with this acrylic ink? And I took the bag that the watercolor paper came in and I spread some white ink out on the bag and then I uh, pressed my stamp in it and it made such a mess. <laughs> but I'm thinking, okay, this is, pro this is probably going to work. Um, and I had so much ink on that stamp that I actually it dripped on the card. So this technique was not successful, but I realized if I just applied the ink to my stamp with a brush, I would get a much neater, um, a neater look. So there would be a tip right there. Just, just use a brush to ink up your stamp. If you're going to try something like that, um, honestly, I probably should have just taken the little brushes that came with the kit and just drawn a little flourishy design and it would have looked just as nice. But the nice thing about having the stamp is that you end up with these puddly um, lines of ink and I was able to take another color of the ink that came in the kit and just drip it into the white ink on my card and then just kind of tap it around and let it flow. And I thought it was just kind of a neat look that I don't know if you get a different way. So I was just playing with my materials. I know, you know, people might be in the situation where they have these smart art boxes or another subscription box and they're new to crafting, they're new to art, they don't have a lot of other supplies, they can't run out to the store to buy something and they're limited to what's in the box. So I think something like this is kind of fun. It's fun to work through a problem and try to just kind of stick with limited supplies and make do with what you have. Now with this congrats one, since I used a blue pen to write congrats, I'm using the blue ink that came in the kit. Now I do have other acrylic ink bottles and I'll be storing these um, Sennelier uh, acrylic inks with those, but I did want to just kind of stick to the color palette that I had here. And I used a paintbrush just to make myself a little frame um, because I like kind of messy, artsy, hand-done frames on my cards. If you prefer more clean and simple, then you do you. Do it however you want to do it. Now, I was trying to come up with another idea for a card because I messed up that first stamped one and I wasn't going to use that one, so I thought, what else could I do? And I took the pens and I decided to just do kind of like a neon stripe. It reminds me of like the 80s designs, um, you know, where you'd have, well, it'd usually be neon on black, and that's kind of how these metallic pens looked on the black. And so I made the striped card, and I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do, so I just set it aside, and I liked that technique, so I thought, I don't have a lot of room on this happy birthday card. I can do a little frame using the same technique. And I decided it would be also be fun because... I could use a couple different colors of pen. I decided to use um, a, like a blue for the edges and then um, use a green from the other sides and just kind of get a different um, a different effect. I used blue, yeah, blue on the edges and I used purple on the top and the bottom. Um, it's hard to tell with the metallics when the light's hitting it certain, a certain way. And then I just hand drew three hearts with the red pen there. Uh, I decided to write hi there on the stripey one, but then I thought that looked kind of plain kind of plain, and I didn't like it. So then I thought, why don't I make some stripes going the opposite way? And I kind of ended up with this grid, and I really liked the way it looked because I was able to not draw the stripes through the hi there that I wrote, and it just kind of highlights the sentiment a little bit, and it makes it a little bit fancier. And again, it's something that you can do with a limited amount of supplies. So to turn these into cards, I decided just to take some cardstock from my stash. Um, I cut the cardstock five and a quarter by eight and a half, and then I just scored it, folded it, and adhered my black panels to the front of those cards. Now these are flat cards. They're not gonna cost any extra to mail. They um, can be mechanically canceled. There's nothing lumpy or bumpy that needs to be hand canceled on these, and they can easily go out in your mail. So I thought this would be nice to send a note of encouragement to a friend or family member this time while we're all kind of stuck in the lockdown. Happy mail is a very good thing. If you would like to receive some surprise art supplies to your home, check out smartartbox.com. They have a monthly subscription uh, programs. They also have pre-curated supply boxes if you're trying to get into a new medium so that you can choose what you're going to get. Um, they have a lot of great things. So check them out, smartartbox.com. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.